As of July 18, 2024, there are new updates on the landlord and tenant laws in British Columbia. These changes, in theory, we'll see how they play out, are set to bring more fairness and transparency to the rental market, protecting both renters and landlords. In this video, I'm gonna break down those new laws, but before I do that, if you are a landlord or a renter, let me know in the comments what you think of these new laws. Is it only a benefit to renters to further protect them as housing becomes more unaffordable? And do you think it will drive investors out of BC to more relaxed provinces like say Alberta? All right, so I'm gonna cover five new updates to the landlord and tenant laws here in British Columbia. Number one being the new landlord portal. So the BC government has launched a new online portal specifically for tracking evictions. Landlords must now register their notice to end tenancy. Purpose of the portal is to help verify the, the legitimacy of these notices and prevent bad faith evictions. By ensuring that landlords follow a standardized process, it also educates them about the required conditions. Now, Housing Minister Ravi Kalin says, with this new tool, we're taking action to better protect tenants from being evicted under false pretenses and ensure that landlords who need to legitimately reclaim their units have a straightforward path to do so. Now, update number two is the extended notice period. Now, this extended notice period is for personal or caretaker use evictions. Landlords are now required to give tenants four months notice instead of the previous two months. And the province states that it's a move aimed at ensuring that tenants have adequate time to secure alternative housing without facing undue pressure. Now, just a quick side note, if you are a buyer and you're looking to buy a tenanted property and that tenant does have four months to move, you're gonna wanna make sure that with your mortgage specialist, that your rate hold will cover you up until when the, the tenant moves out because most rate holds are around 90 days, some are 120. If, you, if you're lucky to get 120, that's good, but you could still be in trouble if the tenant is still there past when your rate hold expires. So you're going to want to confirm all that with your mortgage specialist if you are looking to buy a tenanted property. And if you happen to be a really nice landlord, you may want to incentivize your tenants to move. Now, whether that's helping them find a place, paying for their first month's and last month's rent or their damage deposit on their new place, something like that to incentivize them to move out of your place because selling a vacant property is a lot easier than selling a tenanted one. And tenanted properties typically will sell for less than if they are vacant or owner occupied. All right, so carrying on to number three, the occupancy requirements. Additionally, landlords who end a tenancy for personal use must now occupy the unit for a minimum of 12 months. This is up from the previous requirement of six months. This change aims to prevent landlords from quickly re-renting the unit at a higher rate, obviously which was a common loophole used to increase rents unfairly. By doubling the occupancy requirement, the law ensures that personal use evictions are genuine and not a strategy for rent inflation. That one is pretty straightforward and one I would agree with. And number four is compensation for bad faith evictions. If a landlord is found to have evicted a tenant in bad faith, they could be required to pay the displaced tenant up to 12 months rent as compensation. This, hopefully, is a significant deterrent against unfair evictions. It ensures that tenants who are wrongfully evicted receive substantial compensation, making landlords think twice before engaging in deceptive practices. And number five is the dispute period extension. Tenants now have 30 days to dispute a notice to end tenancy, double the previous 15 days. This gives tenants more time to challenge potentially unjust evictions. The extended dispute period ensures that tenants have sufficient time to seek legal advice and prepare their case, promoting a fairer process for all parties involved. And another statement from the province, these new laws are a major step towards ensuring a fair and stable rental market in BC by protecting renters from unfair practices and providing clear guidelines for landlords. The province aims to foster better relationships between tenants and property 
owners. Now, let me know down in the comments section below what you think about these new rules. If you're a landlord, what do you think? If you're a renter, what do you think? Personally, I think some of the new updates are good, like the portal and the bad faith eviction compensation. But what I don't 100% agree with is the new extended notice period to four months for tenants to vacate. I think this will hurt landlords trying to sell their properties. I think two months is enough already. And just for reference, about 15% of all the properties that are on the market in the Kelowna area right now are tenant occupied. So it will be very interesting to see if there is an uptick in say days on market for those tenanted properties. And that's it for this video. If you did get any value out of it, please drop a like, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one.